everyone. Here it is, February 3rd, and we're having an in-person youth group tonight. But I still wanted to share a message for those of you who could not be with us tonight, either on Zoom or whatever. Um, so I still wanted you to be a part of our message time. So we're talking about anger tonight having to do with our theme of brokenness and transformation. Now, I don't know if any of you have a temper like me. I have a pretty bad temper. Most people don't know that about me. But I've learned over the years what helps me with my anger. And so as I was preparing for this week, for this message, I really thought about some of those times whenever I got angry and the things that I did and the things that I said and the people that I hurt because of my anger. And it made me really sad that I let myself get that way. But then I read, I, I read scripture and I realized, you know, God's there to help us and to forgive us and to guide us through. And so I wanted to share a couple of things that I found in my devotions literally this morning. This morning. So our message tonight is about anger and um, not letting our anger hurt others, but letting God transform us in these broken times of anger. So this is from my Jesus Calling devotional by Sarah Young, and this was today's message, and I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. It says, I am with you and for you. You face nothing alone, nothing. When you feel anxious, know that you are focusing on the visible world and leaving me out of the picture. Mm -hmm. The remedy is simple. Fix your eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. And that comes from the scripture verse from 2 Corinthians. And it says this, for chapter 4, verse 8. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. <laughs> and I started thinking about how Remember, this world is temporary. We're, we're looking towards our eternal home. We're, we're trying to look ahead. And sometimes we get so caught up in this world, we don't see ahead. And then this temporary controls us. And it brings us down and it hurts us because we become trapped. So then I was like, oh, this is really talking to me. And then I came to my 365 day women's devotion. And this is what it ever says. This is what it says. We are pressed down on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. And then it says, <clears throat> have you ever felt thwarted by failure when you were sincerely committed to following God's will? If so, you have company. Yeah, that's me. I, I have company on that. On the adventure, being hurt by our own or another's bad choices is inevitable. But God has a wonderful way of making bitter experiences sweet. <coughs> so... In our message, in our worship time tonight, I am going to share, or I shared a story about a time whenever my anger um, nearly got the best of me. But I allowed God to speak to me. And ever since that time, I have done better at controlling my anger. Now, I'm not perfect. I get mad, I get angry. But now, whenever I get angry, I turn to God and I say, God, 
right now I am hot, I'm steaming, I'm fuming, I'm about ready to blow up. I'm deep breathing, I'm doing the the Rafiki, you know, from Lion King, the, the monkey, and he goes, you know, and he crosses his leg over like this, yeah. I feel like that. You know, Pastor Joe does that all the time. Whenever he gets upset, he goes, I feel like that. Sometimes I get so, and so I just say to God, God, I'm a little upset right now, and I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to say anything that's going to make anybody mad. I just need your guidance. I need your presence. So our story tonight is from Numbers chapter 22, verses 21 through 41. It's the story of Balaam. So Balaam is told by God to go talk to the princes of Moab. But he is to only do what God says. He is to seek God's guidance. And so he says, go ahead and go. But do what I tell you. Seek me. And so Balaam takes off. Takes off. But he doesn't seek God's guidance. And so God is like, well, wait a minute. What are you doing? You, you haven't talked to me about this. About what what needs to happen here and so he's trying to get Balaam's attention and Balaam's just like I got this all figured out I know what I'm doing and so he puts an angel of the Lord in the road and the donkey sees the donkey that Balaam's riding sees the angel of the Lord and won't go anywhere near and Balaam gets mad and he starts to hit his donkey with a stick and he keeps trying and to get the donkey to go, and the donkey keeps not going, and he keeps hitting the donkey because Balaam doesn't see the angel, but the donkey does. And so finally, God opens the mouth of the donkey, and the donkey talks. Yes, the donkey talks. It's in Numbers chapter 22, verses 21 through 41. Read it. It's awesome. So the donkey talks to Balaam and says, why are you hitting me? What, what did I do to you? And he says, well, you've never done this. So they're having this conversation. You know, if a donkey started talking to me, I think I'd freak out like, what? What's going on? Holy cow. Nope. Balaam's just like, well, you're not doing what I want you to do. Just starts having a conversation with the donkey. And the donkey says, but did you see the angel up there? There's an angel there. And, and Balaam goes, what? And he turns and he looks and he sees the angel of the Lord. And the angel says, you have not consulted me. You have not talked to God about what's going on. So because Balaam got angry, he hurt his donkey. His donkey had done nothing wrong. And you know, sometimes we do and say things that hurt the people we most love and care about. And it makes us mad because we hurt people or we did something stupid because we were angry. So this, uh, this last weekend, I went with my daughter, Rebecca, I helped move her to Ohio. And there was this woman she was driving her car and the roads were not nice. We hit some snow. We hit, we drove in snow the whole way on Sunday. Um, and so the roads were not great, snowing, and we were passing a semi truck. And all of a sudden, very suddenly, this woman comes up behind us in her car and she was coming fast, fast, very fast, crazy fast. And she starts flashing her lights, her high beams at us. And we're like, is it an emergency? Like, is, is there something wrong? But she's not being nice about it. She, she's acting like she's gonna ram into the back of my daughter's car. And she's flashing her lights. She never honked her horn, which I thought was interesting. I, we were kind of waiting for the honking. But she never honked her horn, but she kept, she would back off and then she'd come way up and then she'd back off and she'd come way up and she was flashing her lights. 
Well, in front of the semi-truck we were passing, there were two more vehicles. So we had to get around those two vehicles before we could ever move over. Well, in this lady's time frame, we weren't doing it fast enough. And so we got past the second vehicle in front of the semi-truck. And my daughter turns on her blinker to move over so hot pants can get past us. And she cuts in around us. And I had to yell, Rebecca, she's passing us. She's passing us. And so my daughter cut back in to the passing lane. The lady whips around us and then turns and cuts right back in front of us. Even though in the regular driving lane, there wasn't anybody for at least a mile. She could have stayed in that lane, but she cut in front of us and almost took off our front bumper in our car. And then her vehicle starts fishtailing. She got control of her vehicle and she was gone. We kept expecting to see her somewhere in the ditch. Never did. But her anger almost got the best of her and almost got us. Her anger, her road rage, or whatever it was, we don't know, but she put lives in jeopardy because we weren't going fast enough. We were going 72 in a 70, but we weren't going fast enough for her. And she was literally gone in seconds and we never saw her again. Don't let your anger get the best of you. Pray, ask God for guidance, help yourself to find peace so that you don't hurt those around you, whether they're your loved ones or strangers on the street. God calls us to peace. God calls us to love. You have a wonderful night, everyone, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.